When I was 17, uh, my little brother got in a four-wheeling accident and um, they put him in an ambulance and drove him to the hospital and all my family chased after him. Um, and we got to the hospital, we talked to the doctor and he said the line that they say in all the movies, which was, we tried everything we could, but we couldn't save him. And it was in that moment that I was hit, like getting hit with the bus. It just hit me and I just lost it. Um, I didn't know what to do in that moment. I just knew to cry. And I had a friend text me and say, hey, we're gathering at the church to pray. Come meet us here right now. And I didn't really want to talk to anyone about it. I kind of wanted to just sit at home and cry and just feel the pain. But I knew my friend was reaching out to me because he loved me. And um, so I went. And in that moment, whenever I realized that all the people that cared about me were there praying for me and saying that, hey, when we're here with you, the pain didn't go away, but the burden of having to carry that grief went away with that. And I knew that there were people there who could who could talk to me about it, who I could trust with that. And I didn't feel alone. Like I said, it, it hurt, but I was grateful that people were around me to say, hey man, we have you. We're here for you and we care about you. I was struggling with um, addiction within my family. I felt very unworthy and unloved. And so I was scared to tell anyone. I didn't think that anyone would care. If I was unwanted, who would care about my problems? And um, it wasn't until I met my mentor, um, she just was a consistent person in my life. It wasn't until I finally opened up and then it was like this huge weight was lifted off of my shoulders and she was like, you can know like the love that he has for you and you don't have to go through this alone. Like she explained, sat down and explained, you know, that Jesus like died for me, that he's taken these burdens and I don't have to go through this alone, that I am wanted, wanted so much that someone died for me, um, that I was able to come to Christ and she's the one that ultimately led me there. So my senior year in high school, actually um, the summer right before, um, I had a longtime high school girlfriend and me and her broke up. And then right about that same time, the only other person since I was 10, my father figured um, he passed away the same time. I fell into deep depression because of that, and I didn't know where to go. I wanted to be alone. And the only thing that I thought I could be happy with was alcohol. Um, in high school, I, you know, I'd go to class drunk. I would um, go to baseball drunk. I got kicked off the baseball team because of my addiction, because of the things that I was a slave to. Um, I ended up blacking out, actually, and really hurting some of my best friends. Just saying some things that I, I will never be able to take back. And um, right after that, I think I kind of just admitted myself that I was a slave to the sin. I was a slave to alcohol and that it, it held me in bondage. And the next day, the very next day, um, I got to talk to some people about it, some of my um, other close friends, and admitting it and getting that freedom changed everything. And if it really wasn't for my switch group and my switch leader who continues to pour into me today, um, I never would have escaped that. You know, I, I come from a background of gangs and I turned to gangs basically for acceptance. I was out there doing the wrong things with the wrong people and filling this void that I kind of knew I had, but I just didn't want to face it. I'm hurting myself, I'm hurting people around me, hurting my, hurting my loved ones, and just to kind of prove myself to somebody that really didn't have my best interest. You know, they were just kind of using me. I thought they were my friends, but they were just using me. Uh, then I came to the realization that I need, I need something better. I need something different for my life. And I decided to come to church. I, there is a family here, you know, that church isn't just somewhere that you go. I mean, it is the people that make up the church. They genuinely do love you. They really care for you and you can open up to them. You know, and that's just knowing that I have that. It just, it's, it's just amazing. And that, that, that key, I got it when I come to Christ, when I come to church, when I come to Life Church. In college, instead of seeing myself the way that Christ did, I kind of looked to the mirror for my image. And that really brought me to a lot of struggling with cutting and um, eating disorders and just turning to hurting myself to try and make myself this perfect image that I thought I had to maintain. I think I was so afraid that if I was honest with my friends or honest with God that they wouldn't love me in the same way. And I had hit my rock bottom one night and I was just all of a sudden like sobbing uncontrollably in the car 
And my best friend, she was like rubbing my back and she's like, it's okay, we'll just get home. And I was like, no, like you don't understand. Like you, you don't understand what I'm going through. And finally just like saying the words, like I'm hurting myself. I'm not eating, I'm, I'm cutting myself. And I, I showed her my wrists and I showed her everything that I had done. And she broke down and she called um, one of my best friends that I grew up with that I knew from youth group and they took me home and they prayed over me all night long. And so much that like when I woke up the next morning, my best friend was still holding my hands in prayer. She was still like just grasped on so tight. And they took me to my parents who I was ultimately terrified of being honest with. And they, we all just kind of explained what was going on. And my parents didn't, they weren't angry. They weren't ashamed. They were loving and they embraced me. And they actually took me to a counselor. And that's who I was able to open up with. And um, that counselor was amazing because she, she always like posed the question, like, how do you see yourself? How does Christ see you? Which one really matters? What's the most important one? And that's how I kind of found that healing. Think about your story. And it's incredible to me that you have such a vivid memory of that day. Uh, you, you described like, I was at the football game, all these things, all the things that happened. Um, and then it hit you. The moment hit when God was like, this is what it is, man. And, and you were like, yeah, I struggle with this. I have an addiction and I need help. And it's amazing that that was your turning point, that it just shifted everything when you called it what it was of an addiction to alcohol. It's remarkable to me how God has people in your lives that were just waiting, waiting to hear what was going on and waiting to pour into your lives, to pray by your bedside for a whole evening. Like that's, that's crazy that God provides like that. And those people are all around us. Um, and I hear your story and was talking about this void, this this thing, and you were trying to find it in gangs. You were trying to find that family, that connection, and all the time God had it for you, and yeah, He brought that man. Whenever you, whenever you said, "Yeah, I need God. I need Him in my life," so thank you guys for taking them just a little bit to get real um, and opening up. Appreciate it. Thank you all.